In this video, we will explain the details of how the course Machine Learning is run and what you need to do to pass. Let's start with the most important information. To pass, you will need to pass the exam, to complete four quizzes, to finish a group project, and if you do all these three things, then your final grade will be the average of the project and the examination grade, where by examination, we mean the combination of the exam and the quizzes. Here's what that looks like in more detail. 50% of your grade will consist of the exam and the quizzes, and the other 50% will consist of the project. For the exam and the quizzes, you'll need to score at minimum a 5.5, and for the project at minimum a 4.5. The exam consists of 40 multiple choice questions, and the quizzes consist of both open and multiple choice questions. In total, you can score 80 points for this, and at the end of the course, we simply add up all the points of the exam and the quizzes together. And if this total number of points is higher than the pass mark, you pass the exam and the quizzes. The pass mark is set after the exam is graded, but it's usually between 50 and 55 points. To support the exam and the quizzes, there are homework exercises. You can make these to prepare, but these are not graded. The answers are provided, so it's up to you how to use them. There are weekly homework sessions where you can ask questions to your TA. The project is made in groups of five and you are free to choose the subject, but we do have some suggestions on Canvas. To support you in the project, there will be project sessions. These are also weekly and they start in the second week of the course. The grading system, despite our best efforts, is a little complex. This occasionally leads to some misunderstandings. These are the most common ones. First, the pass mark is not half the points. There is no rule that says that half the points should correspond to a passing grade. In our case, we found that a pass mark somewhere between 50 and 55 points for the quizzes and the exam together mean that you've learned the minimum required subject matter. We will choose the final pass mark after the exam has been graded. Second, the fact that you can get between zero and 10 points for each quiz does not mean that these represent grades. That is, if you get six points for a quiz, that doesn't mean that you're on your way to a grade of six. The points get added to the total and the total needs to be higher than the pass mark. Next, let's look at the exam. The lectures are the main focus of the exam. There is also some literature, which is there as support material if the lectures aren't enough to give you a complete understanding. It's technically possible that an exam question deals with something that has only been mentioned in the literature but it's very rare. The exam has a very predictable structure, which you can use to your advantage. See practice exam A on Canvas for details. The main thing to worry about are the active knowledge questions or application questions. These require you to do things like calculating something, deriving something, or following an algorithm. In short, this is the stuff you need to practice for beforehand. And that practice is what we do in the homework sessions. Next, the quizzes. They form the other half of the examination. They are four brief assignments that you do on Canvas. They include exam style questions, but also open questions which are manually graded by the TAs. As I said, the homework helps you prepare for the active knowledge questions on the exam and in the quizzes. This is not graded and you are entirely free to decide how much of it you do. The homework sessions, which are not obligatory, are there to help you with the homework. You are expected to have done the homework before showing up. This slide here shows the first homework exercise. This is a particularly important one because it covers the preliminaries, the stuff we are assuming you know already. If it turns out you don't, that's fine, but it's your own responsibility to brush up. And the homework has some links for where to do that. You can register for a homework group on Canvas. To do that, go to people in the main menu and then go to groups. On the page schedule details under pages, you can find out when and where every group is. The lectures will be taught in what's known as a flipped classroom style. That means that the lectures are offered as pre-recorded videos, which you are expected to watch before the lecture. The lecture is then a question answer session where the lecturer will go into any questions you may have and re-explain important concepts from scratch where necessary. You can approach this any way you like. One approach is to watch the videos at high speed to try and understand them just well enough to formulate some questions. 
and then to attend the QA session, which should allow you to follow most of the discussion. After that, you can use the written lecture notes to work through the more complex parts slowly. The lecture notes are available in HTML as well as PDF. We also make sure that reading the notes is a proper alternative to watching the videos. You can use either medium to follow the material and probably using both in some way is the best option. There will be places where the notes are a little ahead of the videos. In such cases, you can be sure that there will be no exam or quiz questions about material that is only in the videos or only in the notes. These differences will only ever be extra examples or slightly improved explanations. In short, you are not expected to watch all videos and read all lecture notes. Either one is good enough. The second part of the grade is a machine learning project. This could be trying to analyze a particular data set, solving a particular problem, or implementing a particular algorithm from scratch. Our suggestion is to spend the first few weeks exploring and trying out different methods. We offer five Jupyter notebooks called the worksheets to help you get acquainted with the Python machine learning stack. Each should take about 15 to 30 minutes to work through and serve mostly to give you a working environment to play around in. The deadline for picking a topic is the 23rd of February. And you can of course commit to the topic earlier so you have more time to perfect the report. But we do recommend exploring a little bit first. Note also that the last quiz is handed in on March 10th, so you can expect to have a little more time to focus on the project in the last two weeks before the exam week. You may make your own groups however you like. There is a thread on the discussion board where you can look for groups to join. It's good to try and find a group with a similar level of ambition to your own. In principle, you are free to join any group that has space. If you don't much care, just join any group and introduce yourself. As a courtesy to other students, please do not just join empty groups as a solo student. Join a group that is already partly full. A lot of groups need a little time to coordinate to get five people together before they sign up, and this becomes very difficult when all groups already have one person in them. The project is supported in group sessions. There's no project session in the first week, and the project session in the last week is optional. You'll need to give a small presentation each week. This should be very informal, but you do need to have slides, just one or two, to show that you've thought about what you're going to say beforehand. Showing up without slides is counted as not showing up at all and will hurt your grade. People often find it difficult to figure out what to talk about in each session, so here are some examples of the sort of slides that we expect from you. In the first week, you can introduce your group and discuss the topics you're considering. This allows everybody to get a sense of what kind of topics different groups are thinking about, and it allows the TA to give you some feedback on what is manageable. In the week after that, you have perhaps managed some early data explorations for one of your candidate topics. If so, copy paste whatever you have onto the slides and discuss what you're stuck on and what problems you see. Help the TA to help you do some early troubleshooting. Problems like unbalanced data, missing values, or poor label quality are important to identify early. If you get stuck somewhere, just present the problem and what you've tried so far. Maybe some students have encountered the same problem, or maybe the TA can give you some tips for how to solve the problem. You don't always have to present progress, but you do have to do something every week and present what you've done. If you're halfway through some complex coding, you can always present some code that's finished and explain what it does. And just to repeat, if you don't present with slides, it counts as being absent, which will hurt your grade or cause you to fail the project in extreme cases. We won't fail you for being absent or not presenting just once, but we may lower your grade. If you miss all group meetings or never present, we may choose to fail you for the project. At the very least, we will not give you the benefit of the doubt in edge cases. Next, allow me to say a small word on group dynamics. Some people don't like working in groups, so they turn a project assignment into five individual assignments by immediately breaking up the work and never meeting again. Not only is this not the point of group work, it's very likely to fail. If one group member doesn't deliver or misunderstood the idea, the whole project goes wrong. 
We consider efficient group work one of the skills you are practicing in this course, just like coding, writing, and mathematics. If you don't invest in setting up a healthy group dynamic, it will hurt your grade. In principle, we will not intervene if a group member underdelivers or otherwise doesn't satisfy the obligations the group has set for them. Unless somebody stays entirely absent, it's your own responsibility. Please don't let that stop you from letting us know about any problems, just like the other skills, this is something we can hopefully help out with. We just want to emphasize that it's your own responsibility. We're happy to help, but not to arbitrate. Finally, we'd like to point out a few things that often show up in evaluations, and what we do about these points of criticism. The first complaint we often hear is that the course is too difficult and requires a lot of math skills. We ask program directors to check that students have at least some background in probability, calculus, and linear algebra before adding this course to their program. Still, for some people that means having had calculus in high school or having to recall a linear algebra course that wasn't very successful. We do our best to give you time to brush up on your preliminaries before we get into the hard math. And this year we've added a lecture you can check before the course to ensure that the preliminaries are up to scratch. The flip side of this is that we have certain goals to achieve. We don't just need to convey machine learning. Many of you are going to do a master next year, or some of you the year after, where the mathematical level is much higher than it is here. If we hold back now, you will only suffer more next year. In short, there is a limit to how much simpler we can make this course. On the other side, we also hear that the course is too simple. More specifically, that despite all the complicated stuff we talk about, you only really need to master a small subset of the material in order to pass. It's important to realize that this is by design. Doing this is not cheating. We carefully choose a subset of the material as primary learning goals, and knowing these inside and out will get you a passing grade. The better you know the rest, the closer you get to a 10. This is how courses are supposed to work, especially a course like this with so many students. And for the material that you don't learn, you will at least have seen it. You will come away, hopefully, knowing that your knowledge of machine learning is incomplete and that if you want to attain true expertise, you will need to return to this material later. Finally, a recurring theme is that the work groups and project groups don't add much or that there is too much variation in quality between the TAs. This is a difficult problem to solve at our current scale, but we are experimenting with various techniques. These include better communication between TAs and more support for TAs in designing their sessions. We can't promise that this will improve immediately, but we are working on it. To illustrate the situation, here are the average passing grades and the pass percentages of previous years. Please note that these do not point to a disproportionately difficult course. In fact, the grades some years are a little higher than what would be expected from a sufficiently challenging course. This doesn't mean that we don't sympathize if you find the course difficult or that we think it's your own fault. We are always happy to help and we strongly believe everybody should be able to learn these concepts. It's just that these numbers don't indicate that there is a serious problem or that a course overhaul is called for. That doesn't mean that you should just give up if you find yourself overwhelmed by the material. As we said, it's perfectly possible and acceptable to pass the course without understanding all the ins and outs of every topic discussed. Quite often, the slides aim to provide a complete story, so that if you need to know all the details about a certain topic, you have them in a self-contained package. That doesn't mean that you always need to understand all the details of every subject. You can often skip the technical details, so long as you understand the larger message. You don't always need to know how to get from A to B, so long as you understand what A and B are and why it's important to get from one to the other. To help you separate the wheat from the chaff, please look at the practice exams early on. This will help you to understand what it is you should focus on, if you find that the whole of a lecture is too much to digest. In general, it's fine to skip the occasional technical detail, but there are a few subjects that you need to properly master for the exam. When it comes to following complex mathematical derivations, Please note that it gets easier with practice. Maybe it takes you an hour to follow all the steps in a single slide the first time around, and your heart sinks at the prospect of doing that several times for every lecture. But please note that if you persevere, it will get easier very quickly, and before long it will be second nature. 
Finally, the practice of recording videos may give the unfortunate impression that all this material can be absorbed by passively watching a video. You should expect to get as much out of watching the videos passively as you get out of attending a live lecture. It should be enough to set the stage and to give a skeletal understanding of the subject, but to understand the details, an active approach is necessary. You need to watch with pen and paper ready, and you'll frequently have to pause the video. Hopefully the lecture notes can help with that part of the process. Those are the main points to understand going into the course. If anything is still unclear, you may ask me any question you like, but only after you have read this page, the course syllabus from top to bottom. Note especially the FAQ section, which contains some crucial details. With that, here are some things you can do to get started today, and we'll hope to see you at the first lecture.